Hi guys, I'm Lillian. And I'm Felipe. And we're the Postmodern Family. We are Americans living in the UK reacting to Great Britain. We make five new videos every week and you can hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss one. In this episode, we'll be reacting to Stephen Fry comparing British and American comedy. So this video was recommended to us by another commenter and I think this one has been recommended several times but finally someone sent us a link. Mm. Very important. So then I can put it on my little suggestions list and then we can go through and react to that. Now I have been listening to Sherlock Holmes read mm. by narrated by Stephen Fry. Mm. He is brilliant. Brill, brilliant. Brilliant. I I am just so impressed by his accents. They're amazing. And then he also wrote the forwards to several of of these, um, mm. the collection. And he's, oh, man, I, I think he's quite brilliant. Too bad, I, I, he, I think he's like an atheist and hates Christians. Too bad he's gay. He's not gay. <laughs> he is. Like, <laughs> that's what I thought you were going to say. No. Too bad he. Too bad I couldn't marry him. <laughs> no, I didn't know that he was. Of course gay. he is. Well, anyway, um, so anyway, so I think he would he he would probably know the difference between mm. American and British comedy because he does American accent really well. Mm. So I think let's see. What he can he do says. the accent, so he understands he, yeah, the comedy. That's all you got to do is if you know the accent, you understand the comedy. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. <laughs> Um, we have time for one more question, um, which will come from the gentleman there. Uh, you talk about the uh, sense of humor, the American sense of humor, and we haven't really touched, you haven't mentioned so much the British sense of humor, but do you think they differ hugely? And if so, what accounts for that difference? It's a really good point. I think, um, it, I mean, it strikes at the heart of what is American optimism. It's a, it's a really important thing, but not only optimism, but a, um, a, a refusal to see oneself in a bad light or, you know, I, one, one could talk about this for far too He's long. He's making hand motions like Trump. The, the, if you go to an American bookshop, by far the biggest section is self-help and improvement. The, you know, the idea that, that life is refinable and improvable and that you can learn a technique for anything, whether it's lovemaking, being a, a, a businessman, a, a marriage, cooking, losing weight, uh, whatever it is, there's, a, there's an NLP way of doing it, there's an Anthony Robbins way of doing it, there's a things they didn't teach you at Harvard way of doing it. There's an unbelievable sense that life is improvable, that you can be lectured at, or indeed given a sermon at, you know, that that's, it's the Protestant base of America, that, that things are done by text and by works, as opposed to by submission and by you know, a doctrine in the way that the higher church, you know, European, you know, rump, uh, we still believe. And, rump. and there is a sense of original sin in Europe. I mean, this is a bizarre theory that I won't push to its limit. But bizarre when theory. it comes to comedy, it, it's satisfactorily, I think, obvious that the American comic hero is a wisecracker who is above his material and who is above the idiots around him. And the British comic Put it this way, the American comic hero, like John Belushi or someone like that, is the, you know that scene in uh, Animal House where the, uh, there's, a, play, uh, there's a fellow playing folk music on a guitar and John Belushi picks up the guitar and destroys it. And the cinema loves it because he just smashes it and then waggles his eyebrows at the camera. Everyone says, God, he's so great. Wow. Well, a British comedian would want to play the folk singer. <laughs> You, we want to play the failure. All the great British comic heroes are, are, are people who want life to be better and on whom life craps from a terrible height and whose sense of dignity is constantly compromised by the world letting them down. They want to wear a tie. They're not quite smart enough to wear an old school tie because they're kind of lower middle class. They are Arthur Lowe in, in Dad's Army. They are... Anthony Aloysius Hancock, they are Basil Fawlty, they are Del Boy, they are Blackadder, they're not quite the upper echelons, and they try to be decent and right, everything tries to be proper, they're even David Brent from The Office, and their lack of dignity is embarrassing, they are a failure, they are an utter failure, they're brought up to expect empire and respect and decency and being able to wear a blazer in public and everyone around them just goes, 
Whereas the American hero is the smart talking Jim Carrey and Ben Stiller and his, you know, okay. whoever he just goes all the way back. They can wisecrack their way, way out of so any right. situation. They win the girl, they're smarter, they've got the biggest knob in the room. <laughs> The British guy arrives at the room and says, oh my God, I've left my, left my knob behind. I, I haven't even got one. And in a sense, comedy is the microcosm that allows us to examine the entire difference between our two cultures. Ours is bathed in failure, but we make a glory of our failure. We celebrate it. We love the fact that every great British comic hero can go into a dictionary. He's a bit of a Basil Fawlty. He's a bit of a Captain Mannering. He's a bit of a Stepto. He's a bit of a, he's a, bit of a Baldrick. He's a bit of a Blackadder. He's a bit of a this. He's a, you know, they're, they're characters that we recognize, all of them so flawed as to be an utter disaster. But you can't do that with American comedy. You can't say he's a bit of, who's that chap in Friends? Or he's a bit of a, you know, it doesn't really work. They're not characters at all. They're just brilliant repositories of fantastic killer one-liners. Hmm. Okay, so I like where he was going with mm. the optimism mm. and then the failure as the status quo for the British comedy. I can see that. Mm. But then I couldn't really think of any American comedians that were always the winner, the best. Like, that's not what he was saying. That no, he's not saying the best. So think of it this way. The American comedian is... Co is commenting on society and culture from on high as a critique. He stands above it. So think Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. right? He's like, alphabet soup, they're stupid. Mm -hmm. Or my brothers are doing this stupid thing. Mm -hmm. Think mm -hmm. uh, George Carlin, commentary on culture. Uh -huh. We're so weak, we're so pathetic. So he's sitting above in judgment. Oh, I see, right? okay. Whereas the British comedian is sitting down in the muck, looking up, trying to aspire, mm. and failing. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I yeah. can see that. It's a total role reversal. That's interesting. Yeah. So then, when we first started watching British comedy, we didn't what did get you it feel all. like? Or did you... Well, the thing is, is that... The thing is, is that I liked... I had been exposed to British comedy before I came to England. Mm -hmm. And I was a fan of certain things. Like, mm -hmm. I was a fan of extras. Yeah, so David Brent. And... Yeah, so David Brent is the classic failure. Yeah, yeah, he's he aspiring, is. but he fails. Yeah. And he compromises. And he's made fun of. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, um, and you love that. And I did I enjoyed it. it. Yeah. I enjoyed that. I did not watch. I did not enjoy extras. It was so cringy. But at the same time, like, Ben Stiller but I don't think it's a hard, like a David Brent. I, I don't think. think it's a hard and fast rule. Okay. So, Your Naked Guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is a guy trying to be cool, cool, a Bond. cop. He's trying to rise, yeah. but everyone is laughing at it. Yeah, because he's, that's the same thing with Airplane, National Lampoon. Those are all the same. Yeah. Um, the, um, what is it? Hot, hot, gun, hot shots, which is, uh, I love those. hot shots is, uh, but that Rambo one is, spoof. Yeah. Space that was balls. Funny. No, shot, no. Hot shot, really? Yeah, Hotshot, because the main character, Charlie Sheen, yeah. he's trying to be like a Rambo. Yeah. But he's absurd. <laughs> I just love that movie. I, I have to watch it again. It's been a long time, but I love... The... Or um, a lot of Mel Brooks movies, yeah, yeah. like History of the World. Mm -hmm. That's all they're playing. Spaceballs. Spaceballs. Yeah. yeah the, the, large, the supposedly big characters yeah. are the laughed at, the yeah. scorn of, of the film. Okay. So... I think there's more of a mixture, but in terms of um, individual comedians mm -hmm. who do stand up and stuff, mm. you think of Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seinfeld, Look at these guys over there. Like exactly, there. exactly. Yeah. He's on high. Okay. So I think in terms of stand up comedians, mm -hmm. I would agree. But mm -hmm. in terms of movies and um, and shows like Al Bundy, Married with Children. Mm -hmm is a family trying to be middle class or yeah, whatever, but yeah. they are the lowest of the low. Yeah. Al is always embarrassed. Yeah. He has the most horrible wife, horrible children, but he's a shoe salesman wearing a tie, trying to be proper. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know that it's across the, across board. the board. I think there's more of a blend. But now on the British side, there are also do we, I can't think of him, but I can't is there 
the American condescension right. critique of culture. Well, clearly, people like Stephen Fry and th- those people themselves are elevated. in their private lives. But I mean, I don't know any shows or play. comedian or or their comic routines or stand up where they're critiquing culture from a perspective of on high. Hmm. Um, in fact, I, I mean, I can't even think of great British comedian like stand up. Can you think of a single? Very, we we've just started to look at the stand up stuff, so yeah, we don't know very many right now. I could yeah, if the commentators commentators can say the top three British stand up comedians, mm. I, I can't even. Well, some people had recommended we need to react to Tim Vine, mm-hmm. and I forget the other name, Martin or Marvin. Um. Mm. Max Boyce. Mm. So Tim Vine and Max Boyce people had recommended, but we haven't mm. seen yet, so we don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess you're right in terms of the stand-up that we watched um, the Rod Gilbert uh, mm. talking about toothpaste, tooth, toothbrushes. That's the one, I think. That... And that seemed like, that was like him talking about his own life. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, but it is true that there is a indelible belief in the American mind that things can be better Mm -hmm. and that they have it within, we have it within ourselves to Mm -hmm. make that happen. I still have that belief and I will never lose that belief. Well, so then British people don't have that belief. I I, I don't understand that. No, no, no. They think there's a certain ceiling to things Uh and beyond that, there's no getting beyond that. So maybe that's why they just accept take, poor customer yeah, service. Yeah, because yeah. that's the ceiling, and yeah, they gotta deal that, with it. Yeah, that the inertia of life is insurmountable. Mm. That's kind of depressing, though. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Believe, yeah, at work this plays out all the time. I'm like, this is what we're gonna do. No, 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 Felipe. This is what's really achievable uh-huh. down here. And what they end up doing is they shoot for this thing that they believe is achievable and they get here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, let's shoot for this. And yeah, we'll get to this. But yeah. it's higher than the self-imposed ceiling. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? They don't get it. That's why they keep hiring American bosses. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Oh, so d- but that was very astute commentary i think yeah uh, although i think yeah it's not across the board okay i think it yeah maybe i was i was hoping that it would crack the code for me like why mm. why some things are just not funny to me mm. you and don't I- think it does like because you can't picture yourself in the mindset of someone down low aspiring to go yeah, higher think- but you never get there I think I just feel bad for someone who yeah. just keeps rolling around in the mud. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And it's like, oh, look at this over here. Look at this over here. And I'll never amount to yeah, I'm a failure. Go, like, I don't know if that's funny. Like, mm. should I, 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 mm. I hope that someone could help them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a pitiful state, right? It is quite. Mm. Yeah. Like, and to know that at the end of these British films and stuff, they're not going to, they're not going to win. But think about it, right? So the the culture here has been on an island for thousands, right? Mm-hmm. And so there are narrow limits. Mm-hmm. Whereas the culture over there is the, great is the great expanse, ocean to ocean. Mm-hmm. And if you don't like what's going on over here, there's a patch of land over there that yeah. you can go to and start new. Yeah. So there's a... It geographically mm. an optimism that America mm. invokes, whereas geographically here, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> I mean, there's a housing crisis here. Yeah. Who else are you going to shop at? Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's almost understandable that there are limits, but I think they take that too far. I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below with a link of another video that you want us to react to. And you can support us in many ways. Free ways like commenting, liking, sharing, and not so free ways by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash the postmodern family. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.